welcome here to the Dice Tower for the A-Team's Top 10 Most Played Games. I am Camilla Cleghorn. I'm Chris Yee. I'm Roy Kennedy. And I'm Wendy Yee. All right. Uh, so yeah, so we're, today we're going to do the Top 10 Most Played Games. I just kind of wanted to start out and, and reiterate that it's the most played games, not necessarily my favorite games. None yeah, of this not is my most favorite played all-time games. Right, yeah. 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 Right, exactly. Yeah. It's the ones that kind of hit the table a lot, you know? Yeah, none of this is actually really a... a, a a seal of uh, of approval on any of right. these games necessarily. They're just games that we've played a lot. I, mm -hmm. It I might find, even have a seal of monotony. I find it strange because like I tend to play games that I like, and I try to avoid ones so. that I play. Like I try to not play ones I don't like a whole lot. So my list mm -hmm. has a decent amount of games that I really like, just because. I get those to the table on purpose. You know? I think okay. for me, it's a lot of games that I played early on in my gaming life that have mm. just stuck around forever. Okay. And so yeah. sheer time has added them to my list. That, that's a lot of it, I think. It's the games that, because whether they were welcoming or whether they're you know more family oriented or whatever it'll mm -hmm. be as we go through, they hit the table a lot for that reason. But then mm -hmm. I also know the game so well that sure. it, I don't feel like pulling out a rule book or being confused or anything like that, you know, yeah. so it's just, it's, mm -hmm. it's, like it's easy. Comfort, right, the, what did we call it the other day? The the baked bread, baking comfort bread? Food. Comfort food. Warm, warm bread, yeah. 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 Warm bread, that a was warm it. Bread. Warm bread. Mm -hmm. Warm bread, so these are my... Delicious. My, yeah, a lot of these are my warm bread games. A lot of these are going to be shorter, just by very nature of mm -hmm. those are easier okay. games to pull out and say, let's play these, let's play these ones three times in an evening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's definitely some of that. Uh, and... There are some that are also not very short. I yes, feel you. There's a good that, mix, yeah. There's a reason that you've played them the most, because you're like, you really like that game, and you made it happen, and right? And it's really good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I yeah, think... Yeah, and some of them were just playgroup dependent, you know? I mean, mm -hmm. my, my playgroup, mm -hmm. before I moved down here, it's like, these were their favorite games, yep. and I very much enjoyed the games, you know? And so just, it was it was an easy game, because it's, it's like, like, hey, we all know it. You just slip back into right. that, like, what should we play? What should we play? Oh. If you wait long enough, one of these games ended up hitting the table. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. I think some of my games are also campaigns because inherently you play them a lot. Oh, interesting. Right, I have yeah. one that's maybe kind of a cheat that I was going to bring up. That, yeah, oh, see, I didn't consider that a cheat. Oh, okay, so, well, I'm more honest. So way, way to be. I'm happy way that to judge me. Thanks. I'm happy there's not a game on this list that is a, oh no, like how embarrassing. You right. know, or I don't feel like I need to justify any of these. Yeah. Oh. Right, mm -hmm. but. Do I have any? Yeah, like also, I think sure I didn't add monopoly to this list. So. I'm kind of hard to embarrass, but yeah. Yeah. I don't think but I also, let's clear this right now. These are not statistically sound. Oh, 100%. <laughs> like, 100%. We, I, wait, wait, you're like, not showing you your logged plays to prove? Uh, yeah, I have, since you're starting gaming. Yeah, one of us might have used BG ago. stats to make this list. I mean, <gasps> one of us okay. is, is statistically sound. I just recently started tracking plays. January of 2022. Well, when so, yeah, some of us started playing, there was no BG stats, so. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, oh, man. Oh, okay, yeah. Let me get my walker. <laughs> yeah. I get to be the old man, yes, yeah. finally! I waited old for this day. Yeah. So a lot of this All is right. guesswork, but there's a few on here that I know for sure, and I'll mm. discuss those. Yeah. Uh, and so, I don't know. Okay. I'm, it's I'm interesting, excited. because Chris and I play with each other the most out of anybody that we play with, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, right. And so and I've got I'm, the stats to prove it. I'm very curious as to how much crossover we have because so much is perception and memory and all that kind of stuff of how much have I played this game mm -hmm. with Wendy, with Chris, with other people, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it's a very interesting thing. I'm curious how it's going to turn out. All right. That'll That's be awesome. funny. Yeah. All right. See you. Awesome. So with that, um, number 10. So All right, so I've got my fancy dandy clipboard here, which certainly does not just have my cell phone on it. <laughs> okay, uh, update. Clipboard updates, come on! I have this clipboard here to make Camilla feel better. Yes, that I'm the only one that used a clipboard. Well, I am using Thanks, a clipboard. Thanks, Chris. Taking, I'm my, a pal. taking my back early. I, say, I appreciate the, the younger on your team clipboard. chose to use phones. All right. My phone glows in the dark. Did your clipboard glow in the dark? Hey Chris, what's your number ten? Get the lights. <laughs> All right. All right. My number ten is one of the most welcoming and one of the best uh, introductory cooperative games out there. It's Ooh. a game called Forbidden Island. Mm. This is oh, okay. this is the yeah. first cooperative game that we ever played. My brother introduced it to us, and it was just a smash hit. It's very it's very quick, mm. and so I think that helps it get played a lot. 
uh, you know, the players at the table are trying to rescue four treasures off of a sinking island. The island is made up of those tiles that can flip over, and then if they get hit a second time, you pull them off the map. So it's very adventurous feeling for a really streamlined, good little game. Uh, and this is one that we have introduced to a lot of other people. Oh, so that's another point. Teachability, mm -hmm. I think, really leads into... That's huge. huge. Right, and so this is, you know, very easy to teach. Uh, it's one that we've taught a lot of conventions, and I mean, at one point we even saw a, a person, you know, having mild panic. And we're like, huh? it's all right. You know, it's like, I really want to get the, the lion statue! <laughs> don't drown! And I don't know, just for, for as simple as it is, it still is kind of evocative. Oh, so yeah. I think yeah. that's why I, I like this one a lot. And I'm by no means embarrassed to have this on my list. It's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it refreshed, this game was refreshed for me, um, I don't know, about six months, a year ago, when I, I believe it was you, talked about the alternate maps. Oh, yes. Was that, I was like, what yeah, blew my mind? Like a it certain so, rule set? Yeah, it's, it's in the European rule set, isn't it? Or oh, the German, awesome. something, yeah. like something like that. Like that. Those like Americans alternate. are not smart enough to, you know, play one where the <laughs> tiles the are shaped differently. Right, yeah, I like the skull one. That one's really fun. Skull so, one's fun. Yeah. The, the bone island, where it's like kind of, it's like there's a bridge the between middle. two halves, basically, and if the bridge goes up, falls apart, Ooh. you're like, ah, helicopter card. Yeah, I can swim. Very cool. That's awesome. Anyway, so All right, so my number 10, Forbidden Island. Nice pick. Well, you're being nice to me. I know. Yeah, I got your back. It's a new See? day. It's a new That's day. why. It's because we have a clipboard. Yeah, yeah. Am I next? All right. You're up. You're my up. number 10 is The Reckoners. This is similar thing to what you were saying. It's just the teachability. Not that this is this is obviously heavier than... Um, than Forbidden Island. Than Forbidden yeah. Island, but by, by no means would I call it a, a heavy game. But again, it's another cooperative one, but I find that this theme is so easy to for people to connect to. Mm. You know, if they like superheroes, then we can kind of turn it on our head here. So in this game, you are, you are playing as humans or regular heroes who are fighting against the superheroes who have gone bad. You know, the epics. They, because they use their power for, for bad. Um, and so it has a Yahtzee-style dice mechanism where you roll your dice, choose at least or keep at least one then re-roll you know three times and then you cooperatively use those dice to try to contain the epics or take them out um you know save population stuff like that and so i just think that this theme has been so it's so easy to present they like superheroes great we're going to turn that on our head you've played yahtzee before great you already have a you know one up your this game's going to be easy for it, you know and so you can there's always something you know whether they read the brandon brandon sanderson book if they're really into yeah. sci-fi if they're you know so it's just so it's really easy to connect to, and I think that because of that, it hits. This is probably my go-to welcoming game um, if they want like modern game. Yeah, um, that makes sense. Yeah, I've taught this to a lot of people. Um, you know, who it's like, oh yeah, we played Pandemic. Um, you know, it's all right. Okay, let's try something like that. Maybe a little bit of a step up, but still, you know, more modern. Do you usually win this, or do you get wrecked? Um, She's with, a reckoner. Yeah, with the oh, that was a joke. You do the wrecking. Okay, okay, I, I missed your joke. Well, no, so I, I mean, oh, I mean, how, I mean, how, how <laughs> difficult is it? Because I've heard this game is actually yeah. really difficult. So it's um, like, as I a welcoming mean, game, it's like, do you want something that's just going to get crushed for those players? Well, you know, or? I don't mind that because I think it, it requires such a high level of mm. cooperation. Oh, gotcha. And you really have to play like if you're just going out there and this is what I can do and that's all I'm going to do and that's the only option. You yeah. are going to get wrecked. You really have to have a lot of mm. cooperation and communication in this game to even have a chance. Um, I'll say yes, with this, with the base game, um, I, I have a pretty good win, win record, oh, awesome. but um, not so much with the expansion. I think oh, there's something that's it is is tough. <laughs> I think there's something special too about introducing people to co-op games, yeah, for especially sure. early on, mm -hmm. because you can handhold a little bit at the beginning until they really get it, so it starts faster. But also, it's such a unique play style to so many people. Mm -hmm. Right, I've never mm -hmm. played a game like right. that, and it just—I don't know. There's a lot of people that feel like their minds are blown. They're like, "Oh my gosh, this is great! We can play right. together and not feel like we're all at each other's throats." Absolutely, and I think yeah. it takes out that. You know, nobody wants to play a game and feel stupid. Yeah. Right? You know, and so if you have a question because you are cooperating and you can have that open communication, what's this do again? You know, right. and so as long as you know you don't have an, an alpha player or you're aware of that, you know, then, yes. um, then I think it's really welcoming. Speaking of mind blowing, this really blows my mind that it's high, this high up on your list because the box is just intimidating. Like the size of it, the presentation. You say intimidating, I say epic. I love it's it. also well you bring contained. It out. Yeah, it's well contained. It's and they got the trays, and you just yeah. feel like I've got something so cool to show you. And it just awesome. I don't know. That's really cool. Good. Anyway, so my number ten is the Reckoners. That's awesome. Okay, my number ten is Airlines Europe. 
Ooh. And this game is super popular in our family, especially with Chris's stepdad. Mm -hmm. And we literally travel with this game every time we go back to Vegas and visit family. That is how important this game is wow. to our existence. And we always play it. So this is a game where Can't you're all to <laughs> you're all building up airlines together, but it is not a cooperative game because you're investing in them separately and differently. And so Chris and I could both be building up on green, but if I invest more in green, I get more points and more money at the end of the game. Um, so it's a very fun stock airplane game. And Chris's stepdad is super into airplanes, and so I think that's why it became a family favorite. And anyways, just love this game. So because we play it so often, I think that that's why it gets to the table all the time, is there's that theme that just really brings us in, and just the love of it. So. Yeah. That's awesome. Have you all played this? Is this an economic game? Yeah. Mm. It's a stock game. It should be, right? Then this is the economic game that breaks the rules and I like. Woo! I know. Right. And yeah. Chris taught it. So <gasps> it's like... That's, that's a whole thing. Yeah, it's like right shattering. There. The yeah. beef <laughs> is squelched. <laughs> Woo! <Yeah. laughs> no, I, I really love this game. Yeah, I think it's, it's a very fascinating it's idea good. that you're working together. So much positive interaction. But at the same time, like you're trying to get in there and cut through and have the most stocks and the mm -hmm. most, you know. I will undercut yeah. someone at things. some point. Yeah. And then they'll do it back to me on a more important airline. I think, oh no. Oh, <laughs> awesome. Nice. Yeah. Pick. It's a good majority. So that is my number ten, Airlines Europe. My number 10 is a game that you might not think would be on my most played, but uh, it's a game that really hit it off with my game group. I played it a ton with them. This is a game that I would actually take with me to conventions before it was in the Dice Tower Library um, after I started working here, but Tom ended up getting a copy of it, and that is Whiz War. This is a game I played over and over and over again, and the reason that I like this one is it's mostly just like silly fun, and we played it so much. My It just really clicked with my uh, friends in my game group, the little silly card combos. I actually 3D printed out walls and painted up all my miniatures cool. and everything, so I to have like this really nice set of it but i just played it over and over and over again and because people know i like this game so much there was also a lot of people at like the retreats and conventions asking me to play this game and i'm always down to play it so i was showing people the game so i ended up playing this a lot more than you would think for this style of game but it's kind of like a precursor to magic playing different spells trying to grab treasures knock out the other wizards and get to two points um it's a fun kind of like it's very Take that and should mess each other up a little bit as you're blasting each other away, but uh, it's fun and pretty quick playing. So Wiz War is my number ten. It'd be disappointing if Wiz War was like a very peaceful game of gathering herbs and toadstools. Yeah, that'd you know? be a terrible. Call. It's very interesting because a lot of the game is literally just figuring out how to get through the maze to grab treasure chest and take it back. And but how many times do you punch a wall before it finally breaks? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> it's very silly in that way, and and. It's not a game that takes itself very seriously, and I think that's why I've been able to play it so many times, is because it's like, oh, this is a casual wizard battling game sort of thing. So, cool. Wiz War, my number 10. All right. So, big games, small games. I think you're going to see more small games on my list. Mm -hmm. This is going to continue that trend. My number nine is a game called For Sale. Ooh. This mm -hmm. is this. I think this is my favorite auctioning game probably ever. It's it's it does it so well, uh, and it, the game is split into two halves. And Tom has talked about this for years. How you basically can just teach the first half because people know you want to bid for higher number properties because they're better. How are they better? Doesn't matter. They have a higher number. They're, <laughs> they're bigger number. 24 is better than a four. People inherently get that. Great. And so after you've done that, and it's a very quick auction system because there's multiple things being auctioned. You either keep raising the price or you bow out and you take the lowest card of the four that are in the middle of the table, for example. Second half of the game, you, you have this hand of cards that you've auctioned for and it's a simultaneous reveal system. Whoever has revealed the highest number takes the biggest number check in the middle. It's a great little system, very approachable. It's a unique auction, so I love introducing it to people. It's a great, uh, uh, you know, we, there used to be a segment on Board Game Breakfast called Lunchtime Games, right? right. This is a lunchtime game. Oh, I can uh -huh. see that, yeah. You know, I, I literally have brought this to work and have had tons of success teaching this to people. Uh, and, and, you know, my coworkers are requesting that I bring it back. Strangely, there, there's been less lunchtime games since I started here. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're going to say since I came on. No, okay. no, no, just no. since I started Beef this job. Beef is back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the beef is on. Since you started enjoying your job. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. But no, yeah, so I mean, for sale, so fun. That's my, that's my number nine. Nice. 
Okay. Uh, my number nine is a game that I think has hit the table so much because I homeschooled for, for a year, year and a half over, over COVID, um, and that is Quacks of Quedlinburg. And I oh. used this game a lot for what I called sneaky math. You know, so so if you, it just tricks you into doing math, you know, because there's no counters or anything. But at the end of the round, however far you've gone around is how much money you have, I don't know, whatever. And so then you go to the market to buy your different ingredients to build up your bag. And so it's that constant mental math that you're doing. You know, okay, I have 24, this is six. How much does that let leave over? You can only buy two ingredients, you know, so trying to maximize in that. Um, I just love that the tension that this brings as well. And so it just brought a lot of, of fun to our, our play, our play days, our, our game schooling, we'll call it, um, on Fridays that we used to do. And so it's, it's a great game. Um, I, I definitely enjoyed it and, and my son just loved, loved doing this. And I just got to sneak in all those little math facts. You know, he didn't realize that he probably did hundreds of math facts in the 45 minutes that we would play, you That's know? great. Yeah. That's awesome. So, I love making school fun. Yeah. It's a good parenting move. Oh, it's not about oh, making thanks. school fun. It's about it's about, it's about sneaking. sneaking. Yeah, right. It's like, <laughs> it's like putting broccoli in the cupcakes, you know? <laughs> Those you, are chocolate cupcakes, right? Otherwise, it's very clear. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. They're um, St. Patrick's Day cupcakes. Oh, Press the luck. Yeah, I see. There you go. All right, so my number 10 is by one of our combined favorite designers, and that's Phil Walker Harding. Ooh. And this is Baron Park. This, I think, is the Phil Walker Harding game that we have played the most. It is a, not super light, but a relatively light, a nice thinky filler kind of game. It's very puzzly. You're building a bear park, which is cool. I mean, there's so many theme park games, but this is a bear park game. So you're building your bear park and you're puzzling things around and you're trying to fill in spaces as well as trying to expand out. There's lots of stuff going on here that was fun and easy. And it's not a slog to teach. I think with that's going to be probably a combination amongst lots of our games is it gets the table. It's easy to teach. We've introduced it to lots of people. And it's a fun, different way. People know Tetris. And you're like, oh, you want to try a not too hard board game? Let's do it. So Baron Park is my number nine. I love these easy teach games. And Roy's like, bam, whiz war out the gate. <laughs> <laughs> Polyominus. <laughs> awesome. I like it. Uh, yeah, so my number nine is another big game. Speaking of big games, I love it. I've just played it a ton. I really like big, epic games, and those are the ones that I'm like, I'm, if I'm going to play games, I'm going to play this. You're gonna you should invest feel your embarrassed. Time, right? Right? Embarrassed? Yeah, you should feel embarrassed that these are the games on your list. Vikings don't feel embarrassed. They feel glory. Ooh, this is Blood Rage, Rage, my number nine. <laughs> yes. I played a massive, massive amount of Blood Rage. Um, I've drafted so many cards in this game. I've seen so many of the different combos. When me and Sam were playing it, uh, I guess that was during one of the spectaculars. It was just like, I could see the strategies of everything, what everyone was doing. It's like, oh, we got to do this. And I think me and Sam ended up tying, and he ended up like winning on a tiebreaker or something crazy like that. But yeah, Blood Rage is an awesome game where you're drafting cards and building up your little Viking clan and going out there to try to gain glory by combat, but mostly by completing quests and <laughs> sitting in the different areas and making Ragnarok smash you with Fenrir. I mean, um, it's a lot of fun. I played it a massive amount of times. It's crazy how many times I've played Blood Rage. It's a lot. That is surprising. Um, but yeah, so that's why it's my number nine. So I know. You're surprised you're surprised. Pretty epic. Yeah, Chris is like, why would somebody I'm play like, Blood Rage that much? <laughs> I, I enjoy it. It's cool. And it is, uh, it's very much just about like figuring out ways to get those points and squeak them out. So it's a lot of fun. It's a very squeaky game, huh? Squeaky game. Squeaky <laughs> Vikings. Went from sneaky to squeaky. There yeah. you go. My number nine, Blood Rage. I'm gonna to have to go back in time and offer a factual correction because uh, my number eight is the most played Phil Walker Harding game that we own. <laughs> my number eight is Just Sushi Go. <laughs> sushi I Go or Sushi Go, go Party. Oh. Yep, that's the one. So yeah, I'm combining Sushi Go, the little one, and yeah, then yeah. Sushi Go Party because they're the same game. Mm. One of them is basically like, kind of like an expanded version of the other, but Sushi Go is as you can see, this is still continuing my trend of small games. Mm -hmm. Small games that, we, that we've that we had for years and years and years. This one was actually introduced to me by one of my boring accountant coworkers. Hmm. Like we had been- Oh, oh interesting. Worth yeah. accounting then. And it was like years after we played Seven Wonders and other <laughs> oh. card drafting games. And so he came by, he showed it to us. And it was one of those that I wanted to try, but I was also like, yeah, hey, it looks so simple. But it really caught on because the simplicity is just brilliant. Uh, once again, it's a great theme, easy to teach, all of those things that make 
uh, I, I think a game that you can just keep coming back to, and then playing the Sushi Go Party version of it, where you can mix and match what types of cards you'll be shuffling in. That just makes it really fun for me. Our daughter loves it. And so we play this one on the regular with her. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that this is just, it's a game I recommend. This is, I have no shame that this is our most played Phil Walker Harkin game. I love Sushi Go. I think it's a blast. I think it's funny because like a lot of my games are bigger. Like a lot of those games when they first come out, I play them a bunch, but then like kind of stop. And so like I, I mm. guess you continue to play them like uh, even longer, and that just pushes them even higher for you. Yeah, yeah I okay. think so. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, like yeah, you get our daughter involved, and then suddenly we're playing that game every day for right. weeks. That's, you know, well, that's, that's awesome. a trend you're gonna see online yeah. too. As sushi well. Go's a blast. Yeah. yeah. Right. All awesome. right, so that's my number eight. Sushi, sushi Go, Sushi, sushi go, go Party. Yeah, very approachable. Um, speaking of approachable, my number eight is not. Um, my number eight <laughs> is Robinson Crusoe, The Adventures of the Cursed Island. Oh, I have goodness, played yeah. this game so many times. Um, this game was actually part of my segue into mm. modern gaming. I want to say oh, I wow. went pandemic to this. <laughs> and so it was quite a big uh, dive into the deep end. Um, but what I, I love about this game, and the reason I always bring it out, is it's, it's, a he it's a heavier teach. It's a lot to wrap your head around, a lot to balance. Very, very difficult. But what I love is the, the theme integration that I, that I talk about so much. And so what I find when I'm teaching this game is that if you can sell that if you can sell that theme and help them understand and like immerse themselves in the game, then the game almost teaches itself, mm. you know? And so Very because logical. of that, right, so because of that, I've, I've really been able to play this with a, a wide variety of people because it's like, oh, this is because of, I can't think of an example off the top of my head, but if you think about it thematically, this rule makes sense. And then that rule stuck and you don't have to explain it again, you know? And so I think that this is probably one of the best examples that I, that I have of that. And because of that, I can get it to the, to the table pretty often. You know, I've played it with new gamers, I've played it with experienced gamers, and um, yeah, so. I feel bad that I still have never played Robinson Crusoe. I, I heard that's really? brutal. Really? I heard that's brutal to it play is. and like a hard thing okay, to learn. Okay, it's hard. But each, again, thematically, like, what are the chances you're actually gonna survive if you shipwreck on a survival? I like survival? happy co-op games. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> I think, I it's think... happy, you get your leg eaten off by animals. Yeah, the, uh, and Your the definition of happy is Circle quite strange. life, you've contributed. You've made an animal happy today yes. with Aww, your sacrifice. That was a good day. Thank a few you. limbs. It's fine. I fed at dinner. I was hungry. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So my number eight is Robinson Crusoe: The Adventures of the Cursed Island. Yes, that's the whole title. That is a mouthful. That's for sure. All right. My number eight is Jaipur. This is a super cute little card game that has a hidden panda in it. If you ever can find that, that's wonderful. In the first printing, um, not the yellow box oh, version. Oh, it's not in the, the newer version? Yeah, oh yeah, there you go, there's oh, the teal box. That's there you the go, one. that's the that's the printing with the cute little panda hidden. It's very adorable. Anyways, this is a two player card game where you're trying to uh, make sets of different colored, I guess, goods that you're trading in the desert. I don't know, spices and stuff. And you're trying to trade them in and collect chips and get the most chips. You play three rounds and whoever wins out of three rounds, wins the game, it's great. Um, I like this game because it's super quick, it's super simple. And one, um, we, we kind of talked about this early on, that we're really only counting plays that we play with real people for these games. And you all agreed with that, right? Or was that, that just we're a real people thing? or what? Yeah, that you're a real person. Oh yes, I agree. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> uh -huh. No, that we didn't do a lot of online games and a lot of, because. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely, because yeah, yeah, I like, don't play online. Candy Crush so. is not included mm. and right. so, yeah, I didn't um, that stuff. but no. Jaipur I played a lot online on board game arena with real people online so I feel like I it kind of counts, counts. Yeah. Um, because it's not just against a computer so I played this a ton with Chris I played this a ton online on board game arena and that combination of it's just it's easy it's fun it's quick to set up it's done it's it's great and it's a good level of thinky for me Especially okay. if I'm having an evening where I don't, like you said, like I don't want to learn new roles. I don't want to invest in something huge. You like want that warm bread. Yep. Warm bread and jai Warm, warm, warm bread, jai poor game. Warm. Spices in the desert. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my number eight, jai poor. My number eight is obviously not shocking. It is a space theme <laughs> game. But what is shocking is that it's, I think, the only space theme game on the list. What? This is a. 
game where you're working together, you're negotiating. It's a cooperative game. It's not a cooperative game. I told Mike it's a cooperative <laughs> game. This is, uh, this is Cosmic I'm Encounter. I'm so confused. It's a negotiation <laughs> game where you can work together, and multiple players can win the game at the same time, but it's all about getting to five colonies on these different planets. Um, you're working and trying to have all these different alien powers, and you're going on basically like different attacks against different players, and you're having to negotiate out those attacks. You can choose allies, and people have to decide whether they're going to ally with the aggressor or the Defender. You can choose to say, oh, Chris, you can't ally with us. Wendy, let's ally together so we can push ahead of Chris, that sort of thing. Hey. And then people can play in reinforcement cards and try to like mess people up and things like that. There's all sorts of crazy combos and powers in this game, which make it very unique and interesting. And the whole game is really just about like a social interaction with the other players and trying to almost talk your way into victory. Um, so it's very interesting the way the game all comes together. I've had a blast with Cosmic Counter, and it worked well with my game group. I've played it at conventions. i played it during game nights, game days, just over and over and over and over again. So that's why Cosmic Encounter is on my most played list. I really enjoy this game, and that's why it keeps getting back to the table for me. So. Very cool, man. Very nice. My number Great. eight, Cosmic Encounter. I will say it's very fortuitous that you uh, had that discussion of digital games. How are we counting mm -hmm. them, right? If we if we play them with a real person, I feel like that's a play of the game, right? Mm. And so there's there's two items on my list that are higher up uh, because of digital plays, and so that's that's what my number seven is. My number seven is a game called Elder Sign, which Ooh, I think has okay. a really fantastic app, but it's also just a really great base game. I like it. This is a Cthulhu Arkham Files game, right, from uh, from Fantasy Flight Games. And it's just, it's very reduced to the die rolls and then matching up kind of uh, what you roll against certain tasks on cards. I like the theme of it a lot, going through the museum, going through the different artifacts and stuff. And I feel like this is one of those games that was e actually even made better by the app. I think that they re released some expansion material digitally first, mm -hmm. and then some of it went to print. Uh, and then also they changed a few rules in the app that made it tougher and more interesting. It was weird, but uh, this is a game that I really do like playing physically. This is one our daughter also likes playing. Uh, mm -hmm. But the number of times that we were just exhausted at the end of a day and when I would sit there, pass a phone or a tablet back and forth on the couch, fantastic. So to go and kick up your feet and relax. So uh, yeah, counting all those plays together, this is very high up. My number seven. Elder sign. We also have to point out that when we'd go over and visit family on Sundays, they'd always be watching football, and Chris and I are not super football people, so we'd sit and play this while watching football with family. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, four hours of Elder Sign racks up a lot of plays. <laughs> <laughs> this one didn't really sing for me. I think I started on the app, and I had no idea. I don't know. Maybe your daughter plays heavier games than me. But, um, but I started on the app, and I was she like, She does, for the record. I Robinson no Crusoe, yeah. push over. <laughs> I was like, I had no idea what was going on. And then I tried the board game, and I think I just maybe, I don't know. This, this is just it's not one that sang for me. It but, doesn't have to hit for everybody. Right. But you're also, you're wrong. But, oh, Cooperative Yahtzee Cthulhu. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, and I don't know. Anyway, awesome. I probably should have mentioned cooperative. Yeah, yeah, it is cooperative. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> My number seven is Roy. I told you that I thought we would have one crossover. Did you figure out what it was? Maybe because I saw the slide. <laughs> you looked at the slide. Oh, oh, I didn't mean to. It was on the screen behind me. Oh, cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. Oh, watch your Okay. All right. My number seven is Marvel Champions. Oh wait, I, I have... don't think this is on my list. Oh really? We determined that was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so my number seven is Marvel Champions. Um, I have played a lot of this, a lot of this solo. I would set it up, you know, on Monday, and then when I got home from work or whatever, play around, and then set up the next one. So mm -hmm. I'd come home Tuesday, play that one, play that game, and then again set up a new one, and then you know, so it'd be like the game that I kind of left on my table for the week. Um, a lot of times, or in my last job, I did a lot of traveling. This one, this one would go with me there as well. So in Marvel Champions, it, it not just solo though. You can play it more um but yeah you play as the marvel characters and you're taking out the baddies you mm. know trying to thwart their plans and and overtake and uh defeat them so so yeah so i played a lot of this i i actually prefer it i played it most solo but i prefer it at two players i really mm. like the the balance of having two players um where as you're balancing if, I, if you're going to be your hero side or your um, alter ego side, and you know how you can really play off that together. So, and you do the Macarena. Yeah, and you do the Macarena. Right, yes. And you turn yeah. yourself around. 
That's what no. it's all about. No, it's not about that. <laughs> uh, no. So, so yeah. So my number seven is Marvel Champions. I've played a lot of this I'm, solo. I'm glad that it made somebody's list. Yeah. So, sure. quick question, because you you admit that you're very much a theme oriented gamer. Yes. And. You're not huge into. You're not a huge what we would call a nerd in the industry. Oh, thanks, Chris. Yeah, that's two compliments in one day. I know. That's not a compliment. <laughs> oh, that's not true. I'm in the wrong industry. Right yeah, exactly. I hear that. That's a slight. <laughs> Hold on, I forgot. So, I mean, do you really dig the theme in this game, though? Because like, I do because it's so. I mean, I'm not against Marvel by any means. It's just mm -hmm. not something I'm not. I don't. I geek out over other things. You know, like yeah. the football. I would totally be sitting on the couch watching the football game. You know, while y'all play Elder Sign. Like I'm I just, watching the chicken wings. Watch it. <laughs> and so, um, so yeah, so it just Marvel is not my thing, you know, but I think this one again, I'm really into theme, but again, that theme integration and, and the different decks that you have, they really speak to the individual character personalities. Okay. And because of that, you know, if you're Iron Man, you're having to build a suit, and if you're, you know, She Hulk, smaller hand size when you're in Hulk form, it just it has that really good integration. And That's so, really because cool. of that, I, I really enjoy it. Um, and again, I, I like Marvel, I'm just not. You're not always seeking out, like, oh, let me learn more about the Marvel nerdy verse and stuff. Right, right. And I'm not a, not being a big movie watcher either. You mm -hmm. know, it hasn't. So. Disappointing. Nerdy verse, trademark. Nerdy verse. <laughs> I love yeah. it. So my number seven, Marvel Champions. All right, my number seven is Castles of Burgundy Dice. This is our number one played in the airplane game. We bring this on every flight, pretty much. Um, it's a game where you can roll the dice in, it's, or it's a roll and write game, I should guess I should say that. It's a roll and write game, you've got a nice little player piece of paper that you're writing on, and you've got just a couple dice that you're rolling, and you take turns marking off stuff, moving things around, I mean, it's a dice game. It's wonderful, there's a lot of good decisions in it, which I appreciate, and it goes relatively quickly, but it's in a box this big. And you can roll right into the box. You can play on your game t on the tree tables. It's wonderful. So this is a game that we've carried around, brought around everywhere. And so I think that that's why it's so highly played. Also, it was one of our early on dice or like roll and write games. And okay. so yeah. I think it, it had that sticking power that it took the very big Castles of Burgundy game and it it brought down a lot of it into a very nice small package. Yeah. So it's a lot of good stuff. So that is my number seven, Castles of Burgundy Dice. My number seven is a social deduction game. I like social deduction games. I've played a lot of them a ton, but this is the one that I've played the most and it's far surpassed like all the other ones, and that is Deception Murder in Hong Kong. Okay. I played this with a ton of different people. I played it at cons. I played it a massive amount with my old uh, game group. Look. Oh, playing like a so with happy. a ton of people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and it's just been a blast. And it's uh, we've talked about this game a ton, especially during the top 100. But it's a game where one person is the forensic scientist, and they're trying to give clues to the person who's a murderer who has a clue and a murder weapon. And it's just really accessible. Like, you can kind of throw this out. I've played this with family members and played with people who you wouldn't normally consider gamers. But that whole, like, murder mystery theme to it kind of makes it very interesting. And from the get-go, you have clues to how to, who to try to accuse. Each person only has one chance to try to guess the the uh, murder weapon and the clue left behind and once all of those are done the game is over but the whole time the forensic scientist is doing this board with different adjectives to try to lead people to that person it's really exciting and I've loved playing it and it's been played a ton and that is why it's on my list here Such a murder Hong Kong have you ever had a bad session of this I mean do you find it very, very group dependent I, I don't think this game this game doesn't fall to that like other social deduction games do because it's very structured like it's not as loose and open-ended as a lot of other ones maybe you have had yeah because I was gonna say I it. found the opposite I found it's very group dependent I think I've had probably more not good sessions than really good sessions that yeah. seems strange maybe so, it's just anyway. whoever's like leading the game or who's doing different accusing and stuff like yeah. that but I feel like the game's been really yeah. solid but you know That's normally cool. I'm teaching it to people and showing it off so I don't know and you're very yeah, animate and, and, and yeah I can see it. that right. accusing Chris of being <sighs> the murderer obviously you play this game with a lot of people you know who you have not played it with me! Yo. I haven't played this one. I haven't played this one either. I and he's not yeah, offering this is, either. This is a game that I really yeah. want to I do, do want to have. <laughs> oh, interesting, Chris. Anyway. I want to have more party <laughs> game nights and have like you guys over and play. Like It would be awesome to play games like this and stuff that are like really easy to get to the table, especially if something that has like plays with a bigger group of people. It you does. Know, yeah. it's a lot of fun. And that yeah. is a real selling point of it. It does. But yeah, Deception Murder in Hong Kong, my number seven. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say that my number six is probably the biggest game on my list. Uh, this is the one okay. that it's because of the campaign 
that I play this one as many times mm. as I have. So my number six is a game called Gloomhaven. Perhaps Ooh. you've heard mm. of it. Uh, and it, the the original box, the big one, we've played through. I think over twenty scenarios of. And really? Then, Has it been that many? We've played a lot of that mm. one. And then we started a two-player campaign of Jaws of the Lion, which also I'm grouping it in. And then after playing about five or six <laughs> games of that, Camilla was like, hey, I really want to start a, a campaign of hey, Jaws of the Lion. we just finished ca painting Jaws of the Lion. Want to play? <laughs> so we just shoved everything back in the box and said, sure, yeah, no problem. No skin yeah. off my nose, I guess, Camilla. <laughs> but, yeah, my so. my map memory is definitely different. Also, I didn't combine them together. So oh, I was like, okay. I think oh, we really? probably paid, played like 12 games of regular Gloomhaven oh. and probably 12 games of Jaws of the Lion. So I didn't make it on my list. Chris we played by you to some of those games. That's a part of the problem. <laughs> That's why. He just like read ahead. He's like, ah, I'm playing Wendy's character. <laughs> yeah, during... We dur won, Wendy. <laughs> I'm during the worst of the pandemic, we thought that we were going to get through the whole big box. And then eventually, you know, we kind of put it away and then did pull it back out, but we got a good of the, good chunk of the way through it. We almost thought about backing Frosthaven. Like, what do we do oh. when we run out of Gloomhaven? <laughs> oh, no. That's not been an issue yet. <laughs> but still, I mean, we're talking again that we played 20, 30 times, and I'm still excited to play more of. It so. is a game that we kept pulling out every few months. We'd pull it out, leave it out for a week or two, and then put it away, and then pull it out again. Oh, okay, so, so get like multiple sessions in, yeah, and then exactly. cycle it through. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, It was a binge game. Yeah, so that's my number six, Gloomhaven. Ooh. Awesome. Well, following along with your Castle of Burgundy, this this is my roll and write entry, if you will, and it is Welcome mm. To. So it was also my fault first. I mean, really, roll and write that I just dove into, not I think the first one I played. Two was my first, first one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so in Welcome To, I, I, what, I, what I, I think this really hits the table a lot is I love the concept of you all have the exact same information, and it's just who uses it the best. Right, you know, so it's the highest score wins, and you all have your same three options as you uh, lay out the cards. You have your three actions with your three numbers, and you, everyone can pick the same one or different ones, whatever. And it's just who fills out their little sheet the best as you're trying to um, develop this this neighborhood. And this, I, I think, it plays a lot because it's still compact and thinky. This is my go-to. It's bedtime, but I'm not quite ready for bed, you know. So I pull out my lap desk and I'll play a little game of it in bed, and then turn off the light and go to sleep, you know. So it's kind of it's that last thing I do when I'm wow. not quite ready to go to sleep. And I, I've played so much of this. Um, I love it. I think it brings new light to it with the different. They're not different maps. The different uh, seasons, you know, they have the summer and the winter and the Halloween theme and that kind of stuff, you know. So you can kind of filter through that with the seasons as it goes as well. And I just, I love it. I mean, this one hits the t hits the table, hits the bed. Hits the bed. <laughs> it hits the bed. All the <laughs> this one gets played. <laughs> Welcome to Insomnia. Gloomhaven yeah. hits the bed so much in our house. Yeah, just, <laughs> Because you drop it, it's so huge. It doubles yeah. as a bed. Can't carry the box is a bed. The bed. <laughs> right, yeah. So so welcome to it's just it's approachable, it's good, it's I love playing this game. This is one of those games where I always want to play it with people that are better than me. And then we get I'm like, tell me what were you thinking? You know, what did you this is where we were kind of the same oh. up to, you know, kind of looking at our different maps and seeing how different they are. And I just love hearing the different approaches to it, you know, and um, it's always surprising. I just think it, it a lot of growth opportunities in that, you know, it's, um, I don't know, you feel feel yourself getting smarter the more you play, you know, or better, you feel yourself getting better at the game as you That's as funny, you, you say that to me a lot after I teach you a game. Chris, what were you thinking? Yeah, yeah, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> but not to get better, that's to, like, figure out where you're coming from, so where, I make sure I don't I take that road, you know. Got yeah. it. Yeah, like, nice. All right, my number six is Forbidden Island. It's the <gasps> first crossover with Chris. <laughs> Honestly, I thought we'd have crossovers before this. But apparently yeah. I can't do math. <laughs> <laughs> but I've also played a lot more games out of the house, gone to That's game nights. That's true. Chris goes to more game nights yeah. than I do. I watch more TV shows than he does. So that's yes, how it works. You would crush me on the TV show list. Yes. What am I watching right now? What's it called? It is called the We're zombie. All Dead. Yeah, that's the yeah. zombie one. Did you watch any of it? I haven't yet, no. Oh, okay. No, I did find it on Netflix, though. So. Oh, that's that's progress. I, I would choose a not to watch that. Move. <laughs> <laughs> drama. Korean gory zombies. It's yeah. Korean yeah. gory <laughs> zombies. Super gory. Uh, but it's cool. Um, so yeah, so Forbidden Island, that's what we're talking about right now. There are no zombies in this game, but there it's... There could be. There could be. Oh, oh. Expansion. Underwater zombies. Yes. Awesome. Pirate, like Pirates of the Caribbean. Okay. TM, sold. So, like a lot of stuff that Chris already said about this game, it's cooperative, it's very easy to get to the table, very mm -hmm. easy to teach new gamers, all those wonderful things. I think it made it so high on my list because it was one of the first games 
that we were able to introduce to our daughter that were grown up games. Gotcha. And I think because it was a grown up game, she really wanted to play it because it made her feel older, it made her feel special. And we could do a lot of hand holding and say, hey, um, so if you make that choice, this is what happens. You can make that choice, or you could see if there's something else, you know. And I don't know, teach her how to look at straight, strategy and learn strategy. Straight up alpha game. If you make that choice, <laughs> we're done. Your gaming career is over. Out of the family. You're going to drown. <laughs> You no. only have four actions. This is what you're doing with them. No, I'm just kidding. But I think I think it's a really good game for teaching basic strategy and yeah. understanding how to use those action points, how to move around, how to make good decisions in games. And so we just keep coming back to it, and I think we will continue to until mm -hmm. she's too old and bored of it. And then there's something yeah. satisfying about being like, we all got to get back to the helicopter. Let's get there together. I'm right. gonna play okay. this card. Okay. Every make you single jump in. time we play, we put. All the people on the little helicopter pad, and we sing the Jurassic Park song as it flies away from the air. Like our daughter started doing it, Chris started it, and I, then it has become this tradition in our family. I'm incapable of winning this game until do, do, that do, happens. Do, until you sing yeah. the song. Do, 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 yes. That's awesome. Do, do, do. House rule. That's the that's our number one house rule. Yeah. Okay. That is our number one house rule. Take it. I, I can't wait for people to like post about we played Forbidden Island and we did the Jurassic. Park. Oh, right, right, oh right, I, right, love right. I love it! I love yes. it! I love it! Tag right. the post. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. So yeah. that's my number six is Forbidden Island. Good one. My number six is a card game, but feels sort of like a miniatures game. And I've played this game a massive amount, and this is Summoner Wars. And I put the second edition on here because first edition just came, or the, or the first edition on here because the second edition just. just came out just a little bit ago. I had the master set for this and like basically everything for the game. I played it a ton of times, played all the different factions. So that just leads you to having played the game a ton. Um, this went really well in my old game group, so I played it a ton there. I've also played it a bunch of times with Tom as well because we both enjoy the game a lot. Um, but I've just had a lot of opportunities to play Summoner Wars. And this is even without counting, I played the app a massive amount of time. I didn't include app plays on any of my stuff. Mm -hmm. But this is another one where when the Summoner Wars app came out, I played it an insane amount of times as well but I've played this a ton with a lot of different people I played with my my dad and my brother and like basically everybody I've played summoner wars with it's been a blast so so every time you play with Tom does Tom look at you and say what were you thinking how did you how did you crush me so I think bad? Tom says <laughs> why am I playing this game with Roy so yeah. <laughs> also we got a super chat thanks Steve yes, Steve thank, thank you. you so much Steve a also loves deception Murder in Hong Kong yeah. so yes. maybe I just yeah, this is a great group. game if you're into like miniature style, like tactical, like run up and, and fight each other sort of games. This has a lot of really smart decisions and card play in that as well. So it, it feels that niche without having to be overly expensive like a miniature style game would. I will say I do not like this style of games. Right. But I played Summoner Wars mm -hmm. in the second edition and I, I thought it was really good. Mm -hmm. I thought, it's not one I'm going to keep coming to, but like if I'm going to play something in that style, right. that's probably what I'll do. Okay. That's awesome. Summoner Wars, so my number six. All right, so number five, I just went from Gloomhaven. Let's go to the opposite scale of things. This is the smallest game on my list, I believe. My number five is a game called Zombie Dice. This is... I, I was mean, wondering how you could beat For Sale, because For Sale is really small. Yeah, this is it. 13 <laughs> dice, 13 dice in a cup. That's it. I love this game, but it's also about six minutes long to play, and so this is the one that we've probably played the most times in a row. You know, someone saying, like, oh, let's do another one. Okay, we finished that game. Let's do another one. Push your luck, very simple. You grab three dice out of the cup and you roll them. Brains you keep, shotguns you keep, and then uh, anything but that you have to re-roll. You keep rolling three dice at a time until you either choose to stop and consume those aforementioned delicious tasty brains, or you get Ooh. shotgunned three times. And if you get shotgunned, you lose all the brains on the table. Mm. Once you bank them, they're banks. It's a very simple conceit. It's a, it's a very straightforward push your luck game, but... Uh, I still like this one a lot. Also, her daughter likes it. You mm -hmm. see a trend here. This is a game yeah. simple enough that she can play it. And uh, I feel a little bit bad that she has not won yet. <laughs> but she still wants to play. It's one we kind of forgot about. And I think that we just introduced it to her recently. Um, I used to bring this to, I did after school care for a private school. And I used to bring this. And so instead of saying shotguns, I would call them splats. Mm. Because I was like, oh, I don't want to involve that in school. But it was yeah, great yeah. because I could play it with the five year old kindergartners and I could play it with the fifth graders. Mm. And everyone was happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's good. 
this is a range of games. Really this is a game out. I've played a massive amount of times too, but I feel like I got rid of it a while back. I feel like if I still had this game in my collection, it would be on my list easily, especially if I started right. playing it with my kids and stuff like that. I feel yeah. like maybe I should try to play this more and, and get it back out there because it was always a great pressure love game. Yeah. How long is the game? This is really not one I played. Okay. It's oh, it's so fast. fast, yeah. Yeah, it's versus 13 yeah. points. 13. Like, uh, lucky number. 13 right. minutes? Is that how long it is? It's no. not usually that short. Long. Usually shorter than that, that, even, yeah. Like five. Yep. That's my number five, zombie dice. Awesome. My number five, again, continuing this trend of it hits the table because your kids. I will break this for the like top three. <laughs> It'll not be kids' games. But this was one that I play a lot. Um, I, it is King of Tokyo, specifically the Dark Edition. Um, I, I sought this edition out when I when I'm glad I wanted I took to those pictures. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I had, like, to, okay. had to find them. Yeah, specifically, <laughs> again, it's that same style that the Reckoner has of the Yahtzee. You know, you get your three rolls, keep what you want, um, with your rerolls up to three times. And I like the Dark Edition because you have the the powers that come with it. I think they kind of included a little bit of the power up expansion in there. So as you choose to get points rather than just the smashes and the hearts, uh, you can get powers and add it as well and this is just just fun you know it's, it plays larger player count so same kind of the the comment that you made Roy about um, deception murder yeah. in Hong Kong you can play with higher player counts and it just feels good to smash things you know like you just roll those and it has that little bit of um, not push your luck, but maybe adaptive strategies you go to like oh man I've really really got to heal I've got to heal you know and so you try to roll hearts and you're like Oh, but I got four smashes. I can wait to heal. I can do this. I can make it work. You know? I'm gonna um, smash. I, I might die wait. smashing, but I'm gonna but smash. But I will smash, you know, and like just to try to plan out when you're gonna be in Tokyo and how long you're gonna stay in it and, and you know, trying to, you know, get kicked out and it's like, oh man, I really need somebody please take mm. Tokyo. You know, it's like, oh. Uh, it just, just has a great tension to it. Our son loves it. I played it with a group of teenagers, you know, multiple times at our church, you know, when we would um, have those youth groups and stuff. I just, this game hits the table and just, I think, scratches a lot of itches again just to what it spans again it's that family my son can play it I've played it with the teenagers you know back when I was in coaching I played it at a swim meet one time you know we were at a, a really really long All swim meet and I brought buoyant. it yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm, I don't recommend it no, no 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 it was between sessions we played the sweet between sessions prelims and finals and um, and it's just yeah it's just so much fun it just it like again especially the dark edition it just looks so cool and I know we disagree on this but I love the box. <laughs> it's like oh, matte I hate the feel. and tight. Oh, it feels so good. It's so like unique. rubberized. It's yeah. weird. It's I love like it. it. I love the box. Mm -hmm. I, I absolutely adore, adore King of Tokyo, the dark edition. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right, my number five is my first. What's the word I'm looking for? Campaign game. There you go. Mm. It's my first campaign game, and this is Pandemic Legacy. I'm also kind of including the second one and the zero one and. The, oh I just God, feel like yeah. there's a lot of pandemic legacy going on in my life um, throughout the many years. Uh, so in this game, it's basically like it's pandemic, it's cooperative, you're working together, save the world from a bunch of diseases, but stuff changes, storyline changes, things happen, and no spoilers. So that's how much I'm going to explain. But this game, there's 12 months in a year that you're playing. So you're playing a game for each month. If you fail, you play another time that mm -hmm. month and try again. So it's 12 to 24 ish games. We were closer to 12 and farther from 24 because we rock. And the Did you we play it too? With, no, we played it with um, another couple. So you played four? Yeah, we played four. Oh, wow, and still. Yeah, it, well, was, we had it was really fun. -ish. It was such was, a wow. good bonding moment for that group of friends. Like, we awesome. played season sure. one and season two for with sure. them, and then, then we had kids and we moved to opposite sides of town. It didn't work out for <laughs> season <laughs> zero. Yeah. But um, it, was, it was so great, so many good memories, so mm -hmm. many good arguments about what decisions we should make. Mm -hmm. It was wonderful. So. And those I, arguments, I and I don't know about your group, and I was fine. You know what? It's your turn. Do what you want. That's <laughs> how <laughs> those arguments went. Yeah, we had a lot of those moments. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Super Special cooperative. Moments. But so, like, I don't know. There's something about making long term decisions in these games right. that yeah. means that you have to really, like, conflict manage and deal right. with that the way do that I you really don't put in this a sticker 45 on minute here. game. Oh, yeah. I know. What scar? Oh, yes. Yeah. Such a good tension to it. I, I did, agree. I did not combine the three. Uh, on my list, so individ yeah, I didn't think of it because individually. You can buy Blue Haven, but not. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Well, I'm a standards. I'm a very uh, irrational person, <laughs> but no, I mean, well, am I? the Gloom Havens are way more similar than than the Pandemic Legacy. That's fair. fair. That's but, that is fair. But yeah, yeah, it would make the list though because I played a lot of it. Because <laughs> sheer math, and I can do math. 
sheer size. So my when there's a limited mind. number of plays <laughs> and you write them all down. When I can count it all out. Yeah, yeah 100%. So that's my number five, the Pandemic Legacy series. Ooh. All right, my number five is basically a cooperative game and a Marvel game, but not the one already mentioned. This is Marvel Legendary. This is a deck building game that's cooperative that you play out, you're, you have different heroes, you mix them all together, and this is a picture of my collection of it. I actually have more, <laughs> I have more of this game than is in this picture, because um, I've gotten several things since then. But I have a massive, massive amount of Marvel Legendary. I've played a ton of it. Um, I, it was just a thing that really, really hit off with my um, old game group back in North Carolina. We played this game over and over and over again. I would play it at meetup game days. I'd play it all over the place. This was kind of like my go-to cooperative game and my go-to deck building game for a long time, so I played a massive amount of Marvel Legendary. I love Marvel. I still have all of my Marvel Legendary stuff, and I really, really want to get it back out soon because it's a lot of fun to play, and it's just a cooperative game where you're just playing stuff out. I feel like it's been replaced by another game, sort of, that's also cooperative, but I still really what enjoy Marvel be? Legendary. I don't know. Um, but this is a great game that I actually feel like I got some people a little bit into the hobby because of playing and teaching Marvel Legendary to them, so... Awesome game, Marvel Legendary, my number five. I would say your collection is Legend, wait for it, Dairy. Mm. Legendary. Ooh. Watch out if you're lactose intolerant. Did that just make you like freak out? <laughs> <laughs> no, like, no, that just made me groan at the, <laughs> how yeetastic it was. Ah, oh, yeah. I love it. I'm going to say, Roy, the beef is on. Mm -hmm. Because my number four mm -hmm. is also a deck building game mm -hmm. based on a comic book license that I've used to bring a lot of people into the hobby. My number four is a game called DC Deck Builder, the oh. comic deck building. What is it called again? The DC Comics Deck Building Game. But you don't Terrible like cooperation. Name. No, we will Well, actually, those. we play the cooperative. The cooperative expansion. Oh. We play yeah. that so Heroes many times. Heroes United, is that what that one's called? No. No. Is it crisis. 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 Thank it's you. The crisis expansion. Mm -hmm. We really like it. It's too long, but when that was one of our earlier co op games, like the co op expansion for this is fun because it adds just a lot of neat cooperation. The competitive mode is wildly imbalanced. The cards okay. in the middle that come out are so swingy, but it's also <laughs> incredibly fun. And it I would say that's probably I part of the why. reason why I wasn't into it because I played this with competitive or whatever, and it was just like, what? What's going on? It's it's ridiculous. Like you could buy a card that's like, oh, you have like one purchasing power for the round. Cool. And then the the Superman card comes out, and it literally says, take all of the superpower labeled cards from your discard pile and put them in your hand. Play them all. It's absurd, but this was a this was our second deck building game that we ever played. Mm -hmm. Really loved it. Be, you know, I, I really enjoyed DC Comics, so the theme mm -hmm. certainly helped. The competitive mode plays in like forty minutes, uh, and when this is a game that we'd go visit my brother and his roommate, and we would just play, you know, we would just play it daily. And so this is definitely one of our most played games. This is I don't Marvel know why I didn't DC put this on right my list. Because you're wrong. That's why. Clearly. Because absolutely. Yeah. I don't know why I didn't even think of it. Oh, it's yeah. been so, it was so long I ago. I think that's just telling. Like You can play it a ton of times and still it's forgettable. It's forgettable. It's that's for you, Tom. <laughs> that's for you. <laughs> I saw him comment. He's been good in top ten lists. <laughs> is it a great game? <laughs> nah. But is it our one of our most played games? Absolutely. Was it yeah. great for us at that time in life? Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is one that's going to take a long time to fall off of this list, though, because just the sheer number yeah. of times that we played it. And we haven't oh, really? played it, honestly, in like five years. So there's a big jump between your number three and this one? Uh, I would think? Let me think about that. Um, it's getting close. Okay. Yeah, if I had hmm. to estimate. Interesting. All right, so that's my, uh, sorry, I'm number five, DC Comics deck building game. All right, my number five is a game that inevitably, four, also my number four, Whatever it's five minute marble, and that's why I said number Ooh. five because I saw the five. Ah. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Uh, yeah. So it would be forty five minute marble. Oh heaven, let's hope not. Um, so yeah, so my number four is five minute marble. This is the game that inevitably we're ready for bed. You know, sending my son up, and and he's he's like, wait, can we just play a game? And I don't know. When your nine year old wants to actually play a game, you say yes. This is you how know, you wind do I down know for right I'm here. being yeah? Do I know I'm being played? Yes. <laughs> do I fall for? It? Yes, absolutely. And I saw in the chat earlier, um, people were saying that they're 
uh, number six or something like that was strike. Um, that's the other game that I can you know consider, but I didn't I consider that one more of an activity. But this one I think does have a little bit more of. Oh, you disagree? Mm. Strike more is, beef. is a very thematic game. Oh yeah, that's right. Your, your, ba your battle arena stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gladiators. gladiators. In an right. Arena. Yeah. Mm -mm. No. So anyway, so my number. Sorry. Back to my number four. Five minute Marvel. I played so much of this because it's guaranteed to be five minutes. Right? It's got maybe three minutes of setup. You feel it has just enough little bit of asymmetry asymm and the personal decks that you get that you feel special when you get to use that ability, which, let's be honest, I'd maybe do once per game because I'm terrible at remembering it. You know, but it's there, you know, and, <clears throat> and so I, I really like that element. It's five minutes, it's quick, it's done, it's challenging enough um, that you feel good when you win. Is there sneaky with a nine year old? No. Okay. Well. There is, minutes. if you count up that it was a five minute game and there's three minutes of setup, that makes eight. But there's a timer that does everything. No. You gotta count how many of the punches you, you. Need, things like that. Okay, there you go. Count yeah. the punches, but it's just that chaos and it's it's mm. a lot of fun. It's so this is play hit a lot of times when he's it's time to go to bed. Can we play a game? I've played yes. a ton more dungeons than I've played of this version, but I feel like okay. if I owned this one, <clears throat> this would maybe make my list, but just because right. Ruthie likes playing it so much, I played it over the weekend and I've like oh, played yeah. it a I ton of her, times. I taught her this at the retreat, right? Like if I yeah. own this game, like it's gonna be like brrr, playing like crazy. So I'm gonna have to get a copy just because it's a lot of fun. You haven't played it? No? Okay. I got five minutes today. Five minutes? Well, you need six. Because like seconds of setup. Oh. Eight because of the you setup. Three of setup. <laughs> well, okay, that's do you need true. some sneaky math? I do need some sneaky math. All right, there do you, you take, go. take like, the breathing, okay. like the, the you have to have a zen moment before you start, and then it's like okay, press the timer button. Let's go. Go. Yeah, actually, yeah. So I, I do. Anyway, so Nate from the super fun. chat says that the dice tower is currently keeping my wife and oh, I nice. connected. During sleepless, tired nights with our two-month-old. Thanks for so much being. Oh, thanks so much there. being. I do awesome. not do not miss, miss it. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. Happy to help. Things get better about age five. Hang in there. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Got a couple more years. Half a decade to go. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's two. Gosh, you need he's to work on your so sneaky math. He right. said two-month-old. Oh, wait, oh, I thought I said two year old. No, two okay, month old. All right, all right, never mind. Okay. I need to work on my sneaky math. Clearly. I'll play quacks. Clearly. Okay, what number are we on? We're on number four, right? Yes. All right, this is a, another crossover with Chris that I forgot was a Phil Walker Harding game. So this is officially our most played Phil Walker Harding game, and that Official. is Sushiko. So, mm. great drafting game, super adorable. I've taught this to the teenagers that I work with, I've taught this to so many different people. It's just a great game. The cards explain themselves, and so you don't have all those questions of like, what does this do, and all of that. So quick drafting game, super easy, super cute, and I think it makes it to the table because it's, especially the our older version was highly portable, like mm -hmm. the non-party version. Yep. Yeah, we brought it everywhere to everything, taught everybody it. I'm getting really hungry with all the sushi. Oh, oh can we have sushi, sushi for lunch? Well, that edamame. There's not like a good sushi mm. place here that I found. I really want some... Uh, South mm. Florida, work on that. Unagi. There's so much good fish. Delicious. You want some unagi? For sure, good always. Stuff. This Let's was a mistake it. to do this list during lunch. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. Oh. Now that we're all hungry, <laughs> my number four is Sushi Go. We should get Tom to just install one of those conveyor belt sushi things or whatever. Oh, and cool. approved. Oh. We could just put the games oh, on it and like deliver them to each other. It's like, <laughs> pick the games off. Anyway, that's what the library needs <laughs> Those next. little plates are like this big. Delicious. Um, my number four is actually a gigantic game. Um, it's really it. huge with a ton of different stuff going on. This is a 4X style game, and one of the main reasons that I, this is so high on my list is because everybody always asks me to play this game at conventions, and I've played it a ton of times. This is Heroes of Land, Air and Sea. I've played this a massive amount of times. I love this game. I did like the preview for this like before it was on Kickstarter, so that's adding into it as well, just because I played it so many times. This is a picture of a seven-player game I played at the retreat one year. Um, it's just a, a ton of fun to play. I've played with all the factions a ton of times, and and it's just really, really fun to get into. I just enjoy something about 4X games where it's like building up your resources, gathering all the stuff, and unlocking your different buildings, and unlocking your different units, and being able to put those out on the, the board to try to figure out ways to gather more like resources, but then also, you know, occasionally jumping on somebody and attacking them and getting points. I love the uh, combat in this game, and it's just a ton of fun to play. And 
people come to me to end up like learning how to play the game, which is pretty funny. Oh, and I had a ton of people also from like the last top 100 list or whatever being like, Roy needs to teach me on this this game. It's on my shelf of shame. Hopefully I've gotten it off some people's shelves of shame, but uh, it's a lot of fun. So uh, Heroes of Land, Air and Sea. You've promised to teach me this one. I'm I excited. taught these guys it no. too. Oh yeah, so. we played it at your birthday. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Heroes of Land, Air and Sea. All right, my number three. I'm sorry that I just don't have these epic games the way that you have them, Roy. <laughs> you really are a man of culture and you and and stick to it. I feel like there's a joke coming here somewhere. Uh, yeah. No, I'm I'm just thoroughly impressed that you have all these really big, expansive games. I'm really suspicious. Of just this it's just because it's because I play what the is, small ones. Happening? I play the small ones a little bit and then I kind of stop. But the one the games that I really like, I'm just like back to the table, back to the table, right. back to the table. Yeah, you really you like those. And you make time. Yeah. yeah. This the my number three is cooperative. Mm -hmm. It's small mm -hmm. and uh, it Ooh. is and it's a campaign. Sort of, right? My number three is a game called The Crew. This is it. This is oh, one that's I'm had some staying power for All sure. Right. So, in okay. our defense, we did play through the whole log book. Mm -hmm. like we, yep. Yeah, yep. we did at 1 through 50. Actually, I think we started at 3 to 50. I think we didn't play the first two. <laughs> that's fair. But the first like, one is like, games. win one trick. Like, we got it! <laughs> <laughs> but no, The Crew is so good. It, it has that kind of addictive quality to it of one more, right? We're mm -hmm. tired. Yeah. We're playing this game before we go to bed. All right, we did that pretty challenging one, and we let's just let's just take a sneak peek in the in the logbook what the next one is. All right, we're doing it. Right. You know, let's forego sleep, and so it's it has a really great two player mode. I feel like this is one of the most undersold aspects of it. We played through the whole logbook two player, mm -hmm. as well as the number of oh, times okay. I played it with other people and stuff. You mm -hmm. use a little half face up, half face down set of cards along the side. Yeah, it's the Jarvis, a, yeah. Is what it's called. It's great, and it's very yeah. thinky for the one person who's controlling both, and then the next game you just switch to the other person, they're controlling both, and so it makes it extra addictive, I think, for mm -hmm. two players to just keep playing more and more missions. It's fascinating because there's so much more information available in a two player game, mm. because right half of the cards are face up of Jarvis and the other half are face down underneath those and so you have to remove cards to be able to find out what the cards that nobody knows about right. are there. So it's like simultaneously more information and less information. The table as a whole knows yeah, as less. A whole, right. There's actual hidden yeah. information. It's more information but it's also like you said that less information because it's like you see it's there so is that card you're wondering about underneath or does the other player have it? Yeah. You know so it's a yeah. whole other level of like balancing that information. You know, so it's yeah. more information, but also more balancing act of the information that you've been able to um, gather based on what they've played and stuff. You know? Camilla, I 100% really like agree with you. I know that you're suspicious of my compliments. I'm super suspicious right now. But I'm, this is you're a rather sus. This is a today. genuine compliment that you see the hidden genius of this game that Mike Delisio cannot. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, we can be on the same team with this. Deepest Man, I didn't know Mike was a hater. Yeah. I've done, so. Mike likes Mike it fine. He thinks this game's a flash in the pan. Flash in oh, the pan. Right. Yeah, that's right. Mike's right. a flash in the pan. Number three, the crew. This both game started right. the fire. Once again, both versions of the crew mixed together. This is a lot of plays. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And you, did you consider like a play to be the time that you sat down? But no. like, like each yeah. or each scenario is an individual play. Not scenario. Each game. Each mission. Each game. Mission. Each there it is. Yeah, I think that's one whole game. You shuffle oh, them up really? and do them again. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because yeah. I, because I, I don't have this on my list. Spoiler. Because I, I considered the time, number of times I sat down to play it. So if we played through ten missions, that was still only one play. Yeah, yeah. that but that part anyways, is if it, it, it is. It really yeah. is. Yeah. But, yeah. But still, good pick. All right, my number three is the cheat that I was telling you about earlier that I kind of combined um, We've together. We've all done it. It's okay, except for I know, but I, like, Here's the letter. <laughs> I know, but now looking back, and I'm like, oh, like, maybe I should have yeah. split all. But this is Pandemic, but I considered Pandemic. I considered the Legacy. I considered. Oh god. Gotcha. I haven't played very many of the iterations, but I have played a lot of the Cure, and mm. so I included the Cure in oh. it as well. So just the Pandemic in general. Um, so, so yeah, so Pandemic, this is my intro to the to the hobby, you know, yeah. and I play a lot, and it's even now, it's, what, tell, oh, man, I probably first played this like eight years ago or so, I think I still enjoy playing the vanilla, I just taught it a couple, couple weeks ago to yeah. some friends, you know, who I just bought this game, have you ever heard of it? And I was like, yeah, 
definitely heard of it. <laughs> so <laughs> do you know what I, I do for a living? <laughs> yeah, right. And so I taught it, and I, and I was like, man, I just it's just fun to play Vanilla Pandemic again. You know, it was a lot of fun. I've loved going through. I'm currently in the middle of season zero, and that is, I I am loving it. I've, I've actually considered buying another season zero oh. after we finish the campaign. Oh, wow. And just using that like as a base and just play that prologue. You know, I, I really, really like season zero a it's lot. Really, yeah. It's so good. We need to finish it. I know. I'm, so I'm, would you say season zero is your favorite out of all of the pandemics, or is there a specific one that's your favorite? Um, I think it's my favorite right now. Mm, gotcha. You know, I mean, I think, you know, it's, it's I do kind of go through phases with them. And I think mm -hmm. that's kind of what keeps it coming to the table is because I combined them. It um, has so much like, well, you know, I want a dice ba 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 based one. We'll go to the cure. Oh, maybe a little bit of real time, which I think the real time one, rapid response, is probably the most different from mm -hmm. them. Yeah, it's I really pandemic liked. and like title alone. Right. So yeah. I didn't consider that one. I didn't lump that one in. So, I really enjoyed know, the World of Warcraft one, which is fantasy. That was so fun. until they make pandemic yes. in space, that one's going to have to be my favorite. Uh, yeah. space oh, okay. I have one character, I have the Lich King left to paint, and then that will be hitting the table. A lot. Have you played yeah. Iberia? So, no, it's on my to play list. Yeah. It is on my to play list. That's one where you have water, uh, right? The water, like and you build the train water. tracks. It's my favorite of the of the standalone box. Mm -hmm. I've only played that one once. Yeah. I only played the pandemic or the Warcraft one once as well. Yeah. Okay, but yeah. all right. Yeah. So my number three is pandemics plural. I am Damix Plural. All right, my number three is Las Vegas Royale. Ooh. I'm surprised this is not made it on Chris's list yet. So I'm thinking it might be on there, or he forgot about it, which would be very I, a huge surprise. I just don't know if I've. When I really think about it, I don't know if we've played it that many times mm. compared to like things like For Sale. Mm. Mm. But okay, mm. well, this know. is. This is a game that I feel like we've played time and time and time and time again because we play. We had the original Las Vegas version, which came in a very awkward and uncomfortable cube, and then we later upgraded <laughs> to the Las Vegas Royale version when it came out, which adds in a few little mini games around the side. If you see the little yellow things on the side, it adds some mini games. But this is a game about majorities, and so you're rolling a whole bunch of your dice, and you have to pick a number, or you pick a number, and you take all of the dice of that number, and you place them on a one through six spot. So you pull the twos, you put them on the two spot. The difference with the little mini games is that numbers one through three, when you place your dice there, you get to do something fun and different. Push your luck, do some rolling, do some whatever. Um, some of little like gambling games, basically. And so what you're trying to do is you're trying to get majority in those spaces. Each one of those spaces has a certain amount of money that you get a payout for if you have majority. The, the fun trick of this, though, is that if you ever have the exact same amount of dice as someone else on that space, you both lose all your dice. And so someone else can hop in with a majority with like one die if everybody else has like three. So it's, it's a very fun game, lots of stuff going on, and um, my good old home, so. Is this, is this true to the Las Vegas experience, basically playing this game? I think th I think the Royale adds a lot more. Of that Are there feel. buffets inside the box? Uh, oh, the whole box be. is a buffet. <laughs> it has sushi. <gasps> sushi buffet. I'm in. Let's do it. I miss sushi buffets. I honestly, also miss I miss that that's not a thing out here. I love. There is some. There? I'll have to oh, take you. Okay. We'll have to go. We'll go. Sushi buffet. I love real time games because I love that like stress that it brings, and this game is like all that stress. Without the real time, without the fun. Like I don't know, this game. <laughs> this game is like without fun. It's infuriatingly stressful. Like I just, I, the I. Beef is back on. It's back. Well, you <laughs> taught it, so. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, I love this game. It's one of my favorite games, and I'm sitting there like rocking and just like gently stabbing. Don't the disrespect table. Vegas. Like, oh, <laughs> I think after we were done, I just like got up and walked. I was like, I need a moment. <laughs> I need some fresh air. Someone so I'm glad with me. that you like this game. <laughs> yeah, it's one that has grown on. <laughs> Over the years. Wendy didn't say that she liked Ooh. it. She said she's played it the most. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for taking one for the team the most. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Okay, so that's my number three is the Las Vegas Royale. My number three is a game that's already been mentioned. It's a crossover with Camilla. It's a game that people knew was going to be on my list. This is Marvel Champions. I have played a ton, ton, ton of Marvel Champions. I played it when it first came out. I played it solo an insane amount of times. I played through everything that they have for this game. Mostly, I haven't played through all of the Mad Titan Shadow, and I haven't played um, Red Hood, but I've even played like the newest heroes there. I've played every single hero um, several times in this game. And I used to play it a ton solo, but I've been playing 
playing a lot more two-player recently with Ruthie, and it's been a ton of fun to play this game. I've had a blast playing it. I've played a lot of conventions, too. People know I like it, so once yeah. again, people are like, let's play Marvel Champions, and it's my favorite game, or one of my favorite no. games. Yeah. I'm like, let's do it. Let's play Marvel yeah. Champions. It's I've had a blast yes. playing this. It works really well solo. It works really well with two. When you get into those higher player counts, the game can kind of outstay its welcome a little bit, so I recommend it at lower player counts, but it's really enjoyable. I love the variety of all the different heroes. I love Marvel. I love just that theme, and it's crazy how how mechanical the game is with like spending these cards to play this out, to get numbers to do damage. How mechanical it is, but then they inject theme into how those heroes work. This guy has ammo tokens. This guy does this thing to blast that. And Doctor Strange has spells. He's fl flipping through his spell deck and doing stuff. It just feels thematic as you play the game. And I've had a lot of fun with it. Marvel Champions is my number three. Nice. I like it. How many superhero awesome. games have been on your list? Um, I, I know this one in Marvel Legendary. I think that's the only two, just because I've played a mass amount of those. Mm. And uh, one of the main reasons that Marvel Legendary is down further is because I stopped playing Marvel Legendary for the most part and started playing a lot more Marvel Champions because it became my go-to. But Marvel Legendary is way better at higher player counts than this game is. So mm. You taught this one to me. I liked it. It's fun. My number three, Marvel Champions. So my, a lot of this list I've had to kind of guess and estimate how many times I've played okay. which game, right? And, and the order might not be perfect. You know, at the end of it all, the universe might know that my list was incorrect. Mm. But I feel 100% certain about these last two. Mm -hmm. okay. My number two is the, is the game that got us into hobby board gaming uh, well, a little bit over a decade ago. My number two is, is the original deck builder, Dominion. Mm. We, th there's very oh, few games I would feel comfortable saying, I bet I've played this one over a hundred times. Mm -hmm. This is one of the two that I can actually say that. Dominion is very fast, you know, plays usually in about a half hour. If anything, it has a little bit more setup uh, up front, but I'm usually the one handling it, so it's fine. We've taught this to so many people, and people have often walked away from it saying, I didn't know board games could do this. Mm -hmm. and, I, and that's such a great feeling. Now, it's over a decade old. So it's had more, so one, yeah, other deck builders exist. So I don't know if everyone has to go back and play it, but I will still teach this one to people because I think it's still that fun. Uh, I have a lot of enjoyment with it, and it's also had so much time to accrue so many plays. I, I love Dominion, and if I was including app plays, because there was an old Dominion app, like for my iPhone or whatever, I that like I could play. there's been so many old if, Dominion If apps. I could do, like, solo app plays for Dominion, like, this would be probably near the top of my list. I know I've played it over 200 times, because the app tells me how many times I've played it. I've played oh, it the base game over and over and over and over and over again of Dominion. I really enjoyed it. In person, I haven't played it as much. I have played it a lot. But I would always go, grab towards Earth Marvel Legendary. But Dominion is amazing, and I, I do think that people should try it out at least. Mm. It is yeah. all about the mechanics of deck building, mm. which I think if you want to really be able to explore that and mm -hmm. learn that and just understand like what does it mean to have a thick deck versus a thin deck, and um, go heavy money or heavy actions or whatever. Like mm -hmm. it is, it is all about the mechanics, and I love mechanics, <laughs> so it's a good game. <laughs> There's accidentally some theme in there too. A accidentally, bit. yeah. Is there? Is there really? <laughs> oh, I will wax on a long time about this, but it's, it's barely there. But Accidental I, theme. That sounds yeah. less than fun. Well, up your alley, yeah. No, I love this one. Yeah, all uh, and yeah. I'm not counting app plays or anything. Just right. Just, just that play, the, yeah. the crate of Dominion that we yeah. have at home. We've played so much. Right. So that's my number two. Crate. Yeah, you've mentioned that. Awesome. All right, my number two is a real-time game. It's the first game I ever painted. Oh, did I give my... Oh, I didn't use my pictures, did I? Bummer. Um, my number two is Project Elite, and I think this game is so much fun. It is like a, a video game to me, I think. You know, I've played this. I have a, a good friend who, who loves video games, and it's one that, you know, it's like, oh, you like video games? I wanted to, you know, get into board game. I think this is probably the closest one I have. You know, and afterward, he was like... Yeah. <laughs> After that two minute round, he's like, yeah, that feels like a video game, you know. I love it, and I think it's so great because it's just, you put it out, it's epic, there's the big baddies, you know, and especially, like I said, I have my, it's the first game I painted, and so it's all painted up, and it just feels epic every single time, you know, and if you just want to feel 
awesome, you know, as you're rolling those dice and taking out the baddies and, and you have your different objectives, so there is a little bit of, um, uh, not versatility. Uh, no, a um, little bit of specialization. specialization. No, it's different game to game. A little variability. You know, oh, a little okay. bit of variability. Sorry, very simple word. I couldn't remember. Um, a little bit of variability. You know, as you have the different camp, not campaigns, but the different objectives. You know, that you can be. You know, are you going to take out the nests? Or are you going to do an exploration, um, destruction, demolition? You know, whatever. Are you going to do that? And so it's just, it's epic. It's big. You feel really, really just. Beefy playing it, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, and I, I just av ever, I, I, this is just a evergreen. I think you know in our in our family, every time we bring it out, um, the people I played it with, I taught it at, at the retreat a couple different times, and um, yeah, I just I, I really enjoy this one. It's just this it's one, always fun and just exciting. I think know, this every one time I bring it out like. Um, beat out Escape the Curse of the Temple for me as far as like those mm -hmm. real time games. It basically feels like Escape the Curse of the Temple with guns. It's with like, yes. 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 Blast, 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 blast I will always choose guns. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I cheated when we played. Tons of times on accident. Oh really? Right, yeah. <laughs> when he's just like, let's just take these guys off the board. Yeah, she's like, no one's looking. I think I shot that. <laughs> Pretty yeah. much. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It is really cool. It's, and especially when it's all painted up and everything. Right, it's, yeah. it's, it's just it's, you just oh, it's mm -hmm. so good. You know, it's right? an experience of a game. It is, and, and I yeah. think that's what I like about it. Is every time there's always a story that comes out of it, mm -hmm. how you almost won or almost lost, or you know, there's yeah. always some epic moment. You know, mm -hmm. and I think the reason it beats out the escape games for me is because. It takes that that you know in escape you have the fifteen minutes you know and right, you feel right, like right. counting down you know and the that but in this it's that two minutes mm -hmm. and then you can strategize, but then once you start playing all strategy goes out because it's like well I have rolled no movement I, I do like I do, I do like the thing. pause and be like you know? we gotta get to the objective <gasps> yeah. we gotta get to the objective you take yeah. all those monsters you're over there but we gotta get to but the I gotta get it you know where it's like <laughs> but I took out all the monsters but it's round seven and we've done no objectives. Yeah, <laughs> this is yeah. not a good place to be, you know? Yes, every time has some story with it, you know? So yes, I've played it a ton, a ton, but I can remember every play of it, you oh. know? It's just because they're all so epic. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's great. All right, my number two is one that Chris already mentioned, and that is The Crew. So I did the math and I was like, uh, 50 games minimum, done. It's very high on my yeah. list. <laughs> yeah. Solved. Completed. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we played this so many times. Honestly, when we first started playing this, I think every night for like two weeks I was like, can we just play the crew instead? Like we had all wow. these new board games we needed to learn for our podcast at the time and just whatever stuff. And I was like, ah, I just feel like playing the crew. <laughs> It started to become the crew podcast where it's like, all right, on <laughs> this week. Tips, and, tips and strategy for each level of Let's the Let's read the fantastic yeah. backstory of Mission 36. Oh. You're still in a spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> still breaking. Yeah. yeah, this yeah, the story in this is terrible. <laughs> terrible. We read every single one and wow. I still don't know why. It was kind of spite reading almost. It, like. it really was. It was Ooh. like, oh, how bad can this be? It's like watching a B movie. Like, oh man. That's that was the void of it. It's like reading a B movie. You should have yeah. played the Red Thank Six. Ah. <laughs> but yeah, loved, loved it, loved it. It's just, it is super warm bread for me. Right. Mm. Like as soon mm -hmm. as we started playing it, I was like, I love this. This is, this is all I want to do. I want to be one of those gin rummy old ladies, but I'm gonna be the crew old lady. <laughs> yeah, I feel like if you can get in, like, if you wrap your head around the cooperative trick taking, mm -hmm. it yeah. becomes comfortable very quickly, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. so back to that warm bread, it just, yeah. It, I, like, uh, actively don't like trick-taking games, like, right. with competitive ones, but I love the crew. It's really enjoyable, just oh, yeah. the, the, yeah. the mind state you have to be in to, like, work together completely with everybody to do, play the cards in the right order is really fun. I think you have to understand the mechanics behind trick-taking mm -hmm. games. Right. And so right. that's what I think is so cool when we tie it back to the idea of mechanics of, I want to be able to really learn how things work, and I right. feel like this game lets you do that a lot more than other trick-taking games. You can get by, even with, I mean, you're not really winning, but you can get by not knowing how to play the game. It's just the thought of trying to make a specific person win a thing is like, mm -hmm. mm, how, yeah. do we, how do we solve Such this puzzle? Such a cool puzzle. But I've played with people that don't get that and can't get out of that mindset, you know? And, oh, yeah. And, and it's just like, no, you have to stop winning. Stop. Oh, wow. <laughs> you, know, you know, like there's one group That's specifically, hard. and you're just like, 
never mind. Let's play Project Elite. <laughs> <laughs> shoot <laughs> this. Shoot shoot done. Here, here. Just, just shoot something. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, I, I played with one group specifically and just could not get over that and just wanted to, I, but I got to win, I got to win. You know, I think they had mm -hmm. played a lot of Pinochle or something like that, you know. Um, anyway, yeah, yeah I just mm -hmm. couldn't. So there's this, but, yeah. Those are the people it's hard to play co-op anyways with. Right. Maybe. I, I don't know. No, just, just trick-taking? Just the trick-taking Because I've had people that are, I've had people that just, they don't do co-ops while they don't enjoy yeah. co-ops because they want to always win. Yeah, no, this person, I mean, very apologetic, like, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot I didn't want, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, it's like, no, <laughs> oh, well, stop so being like, sorry and medical. just don't do it. You know, so. <laughs> All right, well, that was my number two, the crew. My number two is a very small game. It's the game that started the micro game craze, but I played this game a massive amount of times, and this is Love Letter. Mm -hmm. I have played Love Letter so many times. Is and I mean, this one? just went really well at my game group, and I played it over and over and over again. I played it at work. This is a game that I just played at lunch break so many times. I played with a whole huge variety of people. I even played it with, like, with the store manager at, at Target. Like, as we were playing, it's like, oh, come in. Oh, we're playing Love Letter. Want to play? Okay, cool. And I taught everybody how to play it. And it's I, weird because you weren't even working at Target at the time. Exactly. Right. I just went in there. I was like, hey, where's the manager? <laughs> we're playing Love Letter. It's like, it's like a weird reverse Karen sort of effect. You know? <laughs> it's like, I'm here to have fun. Love it. Um, but yeah, it was, it was awesome. And I mean, I still have played this game, like, waiting for, for dinner. I mean, I'm going to be doing a review of this super soon of the Jabba's Palace version of this game. It's very similar to this, but it's just a Love Letter is still just a fun game to play. And it's just the subtle decisions of like, what card do they have in their hand? What's Chris having? And it's just so quick and fast playing. And that's one of the reasons why it hits so high up on my list, because I just kept playing it over and over again. A lot of those other light games, like Sushi Go and things like that, I played it and really enjoyed them, but they didn't stick around as long as Love Letter has for me. And I continue to enjoy it. So Love Letter is my number two. We started getting very meta with Love Letter. Oh, you have to. Yeah, we were like, mm -hmm. oh, what was it? We had Batman Love Letter, so mm -hmm. I always had Poison Ivy, and Chris would always call out Poison Ivy. You have to. And I just always had it. Like, That's I don't know, one. it's just like the one that like... It was interesting playing that. with the two of you because it was definitely, it was really obvious that you have a lot of plays and understand <laughs> this very well. Uh -huh. And it was like, and then I caught on, you know, and I, I got there, but it was just, it was really interesting to see that meta. And I was like, I see what's going on here and I'm not part of it and don't really understand. <laughs> like, it's, it's so simple, right? Like, you have one like, card, meta. Yeah, yeah. you draw another <laughs> right. card, you choose one of those two cards to play. Yeah, yeah I mean, I got just... it like mechanically, but the whole meta, it was like, yeah, yeah, definitely yeah, felt like, so I much. see things happening that I don't get. <laughs> but yeah, Love Letter, my number two. All right, my number one, my absolute most played game. I actually have record of this because I have played most of this digitally, but I've played mm. it with uh, several friends. One of the coolest things about being able to play things like on Board Game Arena is that I was able to play games with people from all over the country, other friends and stuff. Uh, this is a game that I have played physically, but not nearly as many times as digitally. If that bothers you for some reason, hey, my number one is Dominion. Surprise, right? But my number one most played game, uh, including the digital games with people, is Can't Stop. Mm. It is okay. the... I didn't think about that. Hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, it's... And for sure, so you mentioned Jaipur, it kind of became your like board game arena game. Yeah. You could you know play it really quick on the on the phone with other people. Can't stop was mine. I but. feel like you always had a game of can't stop going. Like you couldn't stop can't stopping. My what, my, <laughs> my buddy Jordan and I have had had like a, an eight month like perpetual feud going on with it, where you just play this game back and forth uh, because it's just it's just a very simple push your luck game. You roll oh. four dice, you create two pairs of it. And then uh, the the on that awkward looking stop sign, that very hideous looking board, uh, there's there's co uh, eleven columns: two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, right? And so whatever combination you roll, you start moving your little cone up that, or a, um, a neutral colored cone. And you can choose to stop whenever you want, and you put your cones out there, and you want to get to the top of three columns. That's it. But if you ever roll a combination that you cannot keep adding to, then you bust and you lose all your progress up to that point. It's a, such a simple game, but I don't know, something about it is it's it's that it's not even warm bread of a game. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like a potato chip. Each game of this is like one chip. Oh, it's Pringles. It's Pringles. Once you pop. That's it. Mm. You're done. No, That's you the tagline. No, you can't stop. Once you pop, Once you pop you can't you're stop. done. You're done. <laughs> 
But you, know, you finish a whole game and you're like, oh, that was a really good chip. Another one. Mm -hmm. Another one. Yeah, I, I love this one. I, it's it's a really fun one. It's it's not my favorite push your luck game, but it's clearly my most played. Uh, over over 200 something plays of this one. Oh, wow. So. Well, and during the pandemic with Board Game Arena, it was the teaching game that they used to teach how the app works. And so mm. everybody played it. And so you could always get in a game instantly. There was no wait time. That's it awesome. was like oh, another nice. game. Oh, yes, like, there are okay. two other people okay. playing with me. Let's go. Like, nice. yeah, it just was, it was instant. Yeah, like 150 of those 200 games is literally just me and my buddy Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's my number one. Can't stop. All right, my number one is another cooperative game. If you haven't seen a trend here, mm. uh, my old game group really, really liked cooperative, so that's um, what I got a lot of plays off. This is also probably my number one game that I have taught. Mm. Like, mm. I want to say at least 50% of my my plays of this, I have been teaching somebody in that play as well. I'm on the edge of my seat. Are you? Now I am. Now you are? Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> Spirit Island is my number one. I have taught this game so many times. In uh, my last group, we had a group of women that would get together once a week, and it was kind of rotating. Um, uh, when one of my friends' his husband was gone for a long period of time, and so we were kind of the staples of the group, and other people would come through and play. And uh, inevitably, you know, it would, it would always come back to this. I, 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 I Played this before I started tracking plays, but I'm probably pushing 100 plays, and I know that wow. I've taught this at least 50 times. That's impressive. Um, I've taught this one so much. Uh, but I love it. I, I love, and I think it's, it's a very um, crunchy game, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of rules, and it's very intricate, I think, you know? But, but what I like about it, because it has that cooperative nature, if I'm playing with a new group, I can play a spirit that I'm very comfortable with you know, and then hand pick a spirit for them. And it definitely takes out the alpha player. And what I found with this one is as I'm playing, if I'm just explaining what I'm doing to them, not to them, but with them, you know, if I explain to them what I'm doing with my spirit, they can pick up on the strategy that way. You know, so I explain the rules and, and just the rules. And then as you're playing, you're just kind of talking through what you're doing then they can pick up on it a lot quicker and they can start making those connections. And um, yeah, so I, I adore this game. I, I love it. Um, that is my copy and that's your fingernails, Wendy. Um, Where? When I taught you this game, yes. So oh, you see my hand. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the top right. Got yeah, it. there you go. Oh. I can tell because it's half painted. Um, <laughs> Anyway. Your piece is not your nail. My oh, nails yeah, yeah, are yeah, half yeah, painted yeah, yeah. right now. I was working on the board game library. So, yeah, so, so Spirit Island, I love the asymmetry of the characters, how vastly different they are, how every time you play, depending on how you set up the boards, it works well at every player count. Uh, I don't play high player counts with new players because mm. that is, phew, oof, that is, that is rough. But, um, but, you know, yeah, two or three two or three for, for new players, and I, I love this game. It's it's definitely one, my highest played. It's definitely going to be my top ten. There's a spoiler. Um, and it's also my most taught game. So this mm. is one all across the board. And This was one that was on our list of to play for, I feel like, a really long time. Okay. Mm. We'd heard from multiple people. They're like, oh, if you like CO2, you'll probably like Spirit Island. They're very different games, but they're both um, heavy co-op games. They're right. And yeah. so... Um, yeah, it was just on that list for a long time. So yeah. when you came into our life, Camilla, you resolved that. You're welcome. You taught us that game. You're welcome. Shouldn't say thank you. She said that it happened. Oh, okay. That's fine. It's fine. Check. Also, thank thanks for teaching. <laughs> hey, you're welcome. <laughs> All right, my number one a big epic moment. Someone oh. asked if it was Aeon Zen Legacy in the chat. It is not. It is Dominion. Uh -oh. I was worried with Can't okay. Stop. When you said Dominion number two, I was like, I don't know what I'm missing. <laughs> what have I played more than Dominion? Because I didn't think there was anything. Um, this game we played time and time and time again for every birthday, every Christmas. Chris, me, and his brother would get an expansion box of Dominion. That's awesome. <laughs> it just was what it was. And so many Friday, Saturday, Sunday nights during the week. I worked walking distance from Chris's brother um, at one point during this Dominion debacles, and so I would walk or I would drive from work to his house, Chris would show up, and then we'd play all night and then redo it the next day. Like, it just so many times we played this game. I love it so much. Um, it's been fun. We've been pulling it out again a, just a little bit, and I'm reminded of, oh my goodness, there's so much going on here, and I'm mm -hmm. not amazing at it. Like, Chris 
and his brother had all the cards memorized. They knew what everything did, all that jazz. I'm not, I don't play like that, but I enjoy just being like, hey, I'm gonna try this weird combo and see what happens. Is it, you know, do I trigger some cool stuff? I did, awesome, like this worked out, so. I love how like once you like really have the game down, like how quick the turns are. It's like, I have this much, I got that, let's get this. Yeah. It's like, you go. And Duh. just like over and over and over again, it's just very rewarding as you're building up that engine of your deck and deck building. I mean, that's what deck building is, but it's just, yeah. it's just, quintessential deck building right there. Dominion's great. Yeah, love it, love it, love it. Also, thanks for the super chat, Thank Sean. you, Sean. Yeah. Thank you. Co-op goodness. Yeah. This might be the most variance we've seen. Like, between the between two. two, right? Yeah, I thought that I'm there would be a lot of similarity. I thought there, yeah. 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 Like, we almost thought about not doing this list because it's like, hold on. You're Chris each other's the same. Night more as well. Really? Yeah. I mean, it's all about so many secrets over here. There, and there's some of that too the, of the perception of things yeah like did, That's is Vegas Royale one of our most played games I'm not really sure yeah. I don't know time will tell I mm. think so because I'm or right or math if you track <laughs> math Royale. Right, so, so that was bring it on my number one is a I mean I just put a collectible card game on the list this is the big one this is Magic the Gathering oh, I have wow. played an insanely large amount of Magic the Gathering <laughs> I played it with with my my friends, I played it with my game group. I played it at at lunch, at Target for an extremely long time. I, an actual coworker at Target introduced me to the game. I had played some other collectible card games. I'm like, oh, I can figure out how to, this works, and I just sunk in and like played a massive, massive amount. Um, I went to a pre-release. This is actually a picture from my pre-release deck or whatever, where I played with Tom at a pre-release. Um, but yeah, I've had a ton of fun playing Magic, and uh, it is a game that is very much one that's hard to keep up with, because they have set rotation and tons of extremely expensive cards, but it would be a lie to not say that I haven't, this isn't my most played game, because I've played in tournaments, Friday Night Magic for like multiple years, you know, it's just so many gameplays of Magic the Gathering. And it's just that original collectible card game of building a deck and doing combos. A lot of the game is just building that deck first and then seeing how it plays out against other types of decks. Um, but it's been a blast to play. Tons of interesting choices and decisions as you play Magic the Gathering. And it's kind of like informed a lot of my gaming taste as well. Like you can see I like all these combos that you can build up and all that yeah. stuff. So. I, I really that too, seeing those combos and really that enjoy magic sometimes, except when like the cards aren't falling right, and then you're just like, and I can't afford to play this game. So there's that. <laughs> there's that. But... You know, I still have never played Magic the Gathering to this day. It's it's actually an extremely simple game to just play, you know. But like, it's the whole like building decks and like maximizing that deck to make it super efficient against other decks. That's the hobby the part around that, the hobby. Yeah, that's yeah, the part that gets I, I you that's... super sucked into it. Is like. Right. How do I build a deck that's going to beat the current meta and all that stuff? Right. A lot of it is like, you have to be able to afford to build a deck that's good enough. But right. then from there, you have to also minimize all of your play mistakes so that you're just really, really good at the game. And I mean, when you play it at like high levels, it gets insane, you know? And a new card comes out and it completely breaks the meta. It's like, oh, well, now we're playing this, you know? So It's probably my number one game of... I think I would really like, but I don't want to play because I don't want to get sucked into that. Like, right, oh, exactly. but now I got this, yes. you know. It's, and I just know it's that it's one I of those things that it can right. really get a hold of you. I I played, I started playing it more and like Poplar, which is like where you play with just decks that are only common cards. Because common cards are normally like okay. five cents, ten cents. So you can basically get common cards super oh, easy. But if you only play with common cards, the complexity of the game is a little bit lower, but it's still a lot of fun. I played that a bunch with my kids. I just made a ton of decks of common cards and just we play against each other and then you don't have to care if the cards get ruined and you can just go to the card shop and be like oh give me a place out of this and a place out of that you know but then you're still spending like a dollar to get a whole bunch of cards you know oh, that's cool i like that idea so. awesome. sneaky math and you get to say after you whoop them what were you thinking exactly <laughs> come on son what were you thinking you can't triple tap the the wizard eating dragon number four when you don't have enough lands out noob i assume that's how you that's exactly how I play. Yeah. It's like, mm -hmm. I had a plus one, plus one token. You forgot I was stronger and defeated you. No, no, so, I have a ton of fun. He's calling you out there. Extremely simple gameplay. Nah, Mad bro. bro. <laughs> the actual <laughs> gameplay of Magic itself is not hard. I mean, you play lands, you tap those lands to play the cards down. It's all the combos that make the game hard. You know, I mean, if you're playing with the, the intro decks, it's not hard to play. <laughs> See, why are you on my head? <laughs> anyway, but yeah, Combo it's it's fun, moves. and I mean, it, the problem is playing with people that are like at a way higher level is 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 a lot harder, you know. So, but yeah, that is my number one. So, all right, and that is our Good top stuff. ten most played games. 
Um, yeah, so until next time, I'm Camilla Cleghorn. I'm, I'm Chris Yee. <laughs> I'm Roy Kennedy. And I'm Wendy Yee. Keep playing games. Keep on trucking. Play games. Go. Lots of them. Yeah.